Okay, so welcome to lecture series on millimeter wave technology. So roughly from 30 gigahertz to 300 gigahertz we consider as millimeter wave spectrum. So that corresponds to free space wavelength of 10 millimeter to 1 millimeter. So that means millimeter wave wavelength is little shorter than RF or microwave frequency band and it is a little longer than X-ray or infrared or visible wavelength. Now the high frequency of millimeter wave frequency band and its propagation characteristics make it suitable for very high data rate com wireless channel. So one of the most important uses of millimeter wave spectrum is high frequency wireless channel. For any wireless channel, it comes with a specific bandwidth and the corresponding wavelength. So if we want to increase the bandwidth, so then we have to go for high frequency, app, higher frequency range. But the thing is that at microwave frequency range already all the frequency spectrum are preoccupied. Then the only option is to go for millimeter wave communication. That is why fifth generation wireless communication is being proposed at millimeter wave frequencies. So now at microwave frequencies already Mbps channels are available. But if we want to further increase channel capacity, we have to go for a GBPS channel and it is possible that is why at millimeter wave frequencies. One more important application is radar applications. It uses another important property of millimeter wave propagations that is called beam width. We can design antennas of moderate sizes from which we can have very narrow beam width at millimeter wave frequencies. So whole radar system it can be installed inside one car. So that is why it is already being used in automobile applications as collision avoidance radar. Another application is millimeter wave imaging. Very high resolution imaging is possible both active and uh, and passive imaging possible. So what is the advantage of millimeter wave imaging in comparison to visible imaging and infrared frequency range is that we can use a millimeter wave imaging system under heavy rain, under snowfall, even in dust storm and in foggy condition. So that is why it is called an all weather system. But looking at the uh, practical applications, an efficient and reliable and low cost millimeter wave system for consumer applications are yet to come. It is usually bulky and expensive. So that is why it did not become popular. So many researchers are working on it. Millimeter at millimeter wave frequencies, the channel capacity it decreases. Signal to noise ratio at the receiver end it decreases and as a result that channel capacity decreases and detection of millimeter wave signal it becomes a problem. And not only that at millimeter wave frequencies components are lossy, antenna efficiency decreases. So we have to deal with so many challenges even though we have many advantages at millimeter wave spectrum. So in this class we are going to learn basics of millimeter wave technology. We will assume that students have some background on microwave engineering. We will start with the very general characteristics of millimeter wave propagation, what are the sources of 
losses, how to design the components, antennas at millimeter wave frequency range, and the active devices which are popular at millimeter wave frequency range. And finally, we will as a system, uh, as an application, we will introduce millimeter wave passive imaging system. So, at millimeter wave frequencies, loss is very important. And then how to characterize this loss? What is the effect of noise on channel? And as a whole, uh, for a in a, a millimeter wave system, so that uh, how we uh, how we do it, we calculate the signal to noise ratio. So how to rate for a millimeter wave system? That also we will discuss. There will be one more course on uh, mono millimeter wave monolithic integrated circuit, popularly known as MIMIC. So where we will discuss about the millimeter wave semiconductor uh, procedure. So, hope you will enjoy the course. Thank you.